more lies. Hey guys, Rob and Georgia here with you, aka VHS 82 apostrophe with week 488. It is random week, and I thought I would do something really, really, really super different and run with the latest incarnation of Pinocchio from, of course, most of us uh, love and adore Guillermo del Toro. It is uh, really uh, his thrust uh, to get this thing done. Um, and of course, it is uh, presented by Netflix. If you haven't really seen it, uh, you really do need to. Now, I'm joined today, of course, with... Jim's. Max. My two youngest boys. And uh, we did see this movie a couple times. And so we thought we would just talk about it a little bit. I know Pinocchio might be uh, seem a bit of a stretch for body bags, but uh, you know sometimes you got to stretch the rubber band just a little bit. Um, I think why not have fun for a moment? Uh, first of all, let me just go ahead and uh, start off uh, with uh, this. This absolutely was an amazing presentation of uh, stop motion anim animation. Uh, done old school with uh, the actual mechanics. Uh, there's no what you would call face replacement technology. It is the actual mechanics within each piece of creation and done really, really old school. It is, it is a craft that you don't see very often uh, in filmmaking anymore. Of course, Tim Burton got into it a little bit, of course, as we know. And uh, But a reason to throw this movie front and center is, of course, you know, one, it's Guillermo del Toro, and we know him, of course, from uh, The Devil's Backbone, which this movie actually uh, leans on a little bit in, uh, in a few uh, instances. Of course, Hellboy, Mimic, and uh, uh, Pacific Rim. You guys have seen Pacific Rim. That's Guillermo del Toro. Um, Pan's Labyrinth. Um, we can go on and on and on. The Shape of Water. Um Guillermo del Toro is a uh, favorite of mine and uh, one I like to, uh, you know, kind of keep. In fact, I rented or reviewed uh, Devil's Backbone not too long ago, actually, via body bags, I'm pretty sure. Um, so uh, really the synopsis, basically, this is an adaption, a pretty faithful adaption from what I've read uh, from the original 1883 novel. There's something right there. I had no idea. Did you guys know Pinocchio was that old? 1883, it is an Italian piece of fiction and uh, by some hailed at the time as the greatest piece of fiction to come out of Italy, uh, which are just a few little things that I just did not realize or know. Now, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar at least with the story of Pinocchio. Um, this, uh, this adaption has uh, been moved forward in time just a little bit to, um, you remember what time period? Around World War II. Around World War II. So in the interwar years and as we get into the war, of course, who is, uh, for Italy's dictator, who is the central character? Um, Mussolini. Mussolini. Benito Mussolini. And he does uh, have a pretty interesting part in this, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. um, so really, basically, uh, we it is the general idea of Pinocchio. Um, and we're gonna, it's just probably easier just to kind of talk about it, but it is a pretty faithful adaption. Um, and another reason to uh, include it in the long history of body bags is uh, not only is this a classic piece of, of literature, but it deals even uh, Del Toro's uh, cinematic presentation of it deals with some pretty dark material, but material nonetheless that is there to teach uh, teach us uh, about a lot of things. Uh, first of all, James, get us started. Um, that you should use your time wisely and don't waste your time on like, the small things and focus on the big things. Okay, what did else did it teach us, Max? Taught us we should never what? Talk to a stranger. Talk to strangers. Where was Pinocchio going when he decided to uh, talk to strangers? Um, at, supposed to go into school. And, and it was school. And whose book did he have? Carlos. Carlos book, which is another thing I didn't realize that the uh, uh, Geppetto's uh, boy, who of course um, is tragically lost uh, in the opening minutes of the film, um, is named Carlo after the writer of the original uh, novel, uh, Pinocchio, which I didn't realize. Um, Claudai, I think his last name was Carlo Claudai, if I'm saying that right. Um, is, this movie really is moving and moves on a lot of uh, interesting levels um, that really even moved me. Maybe as a father having two young boys, 
Um, you really can feel uh, Geppetto's pain. It really does come through. Maybe as much as, and I just thought about this, but um, the original King Kong is stop motion. And even though it's stop motion, you probably gain more from King Kong in the original 30s adaption than you do, dare I say, Peter Jackson's. It just, there's something more, you, you grow attached to something a little bit more that's real. And stop motion is definitely much more real than CGI, right? And there's a personal attachment there because you, you're seeing something that is absolutely real. Um, and uh, the, well, let's just, uh, some of the main characters real quick. Um, we got, of course, uh, Pinocchio and uh, Carlo. Uh, the two are played by the same person, Gregory Mann. Uh, you have, of course, Sebastian J. Cricket, who is played none other than by... Um, Oh, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Edwin McGregor, right. Uh, which he was absolutely perfectly cast, I thought. Um, David Bradley uh, plays Geppetto, of course. Christopher Waltz is in this thing with a voice, uh, playing Count Volpe, which in Italian uh, apparently means fox, which soon to be a surprise uh, in terms of his character. Um, of course, Tilda Swinton's in here playing both uh, the wood sprite, uh, who is the one to uh, sort of a fairy, angelic creature who will breathe life into um, Pinocchio. But she will also play her sister, Death, which I is, uh, both characters are very, very fascinating to watch on screen. Uh, Spazatura, the, the monk, Count Volpe's uh, monkey. Uh, Kate Blanchett, which is a shock that that's the one that she's playing. Ron Perlman is Podesta. Of course, he is one of our antagonists, right? Uh, he is the, the military one who is uh, in charge of recruiting uh, Italy's youngest and finest for war. Um, this is, of course, again, World War World War II. Uh, and Podesta's uh, son named? Um, Candlewick. Candlewick, which does play uh, prominently in the film because uh, too often he feels like um, nothing more than a Candlewick. Uh, that is burning very quickly and doesn't see much purpose or value in his life. And he doesn't get a lot from his father. There's a lot of themes running um, deep about relationships. What really is, it is a metaphor for the human condition. Uh, relationships between a father and his son and the son and the father and and on we go and responsibilities and whatnot. Um, uh, and of course, the priest... Um, Bern Gorman and uh, the last one, of course, uh, they're not the onlys, but these are probably the main uh, Benito Mussolini, which is a great, 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 great um, moment and a very, very moving moment when uh, Pinocchio uh, stumbles upon Count Volpe uh, beating uh, Spazzatura um, for enlightening Pinocchio in terms of uh, his true intentions uh, one of the things was that uh, we find that uh, Count Vomp is not doing what, as Pinocchio thought he was. Um, he was not sending half the money to his father. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Pinocchio is under the impression that he's, we find in the story that he will, of his own self, go and rejoin the carnival. Um, even though this isn't the best situation, he'll go and do it in order to not be a burden, which is another um, heavy matter that's dealt with the fact that uh, uh, Geppetto, um, who is just frustrated and, and he just, he, he can't see the value initially in the gift that the wood spray has given him in terms of companionship. When he loses his boy, Carlo, uh, in a really tragic, tragic accident, um, a bomb, which, you know, in many ways, like the devil's backbone, um, they're at church working late at night. Um, Geppetto is a woodsmith and he is uh, finishing off uh, a beautiful wood carving of Christ, a huge one. And he's way up high on the ladder and, uh, and they're trying to work, finish up late and they hear the planes and uh, he just gets a bad feeling that some, that it's just not good. And so he tries to usher them out of there quick like. And as they go out, of course, Carlo forgets that he left it. What did he leave in the church? Um, a pine cone. Yeah. A pine cone that he was going to grow. Yeah, a pine cone that was the perfect pine cone. And, of course, he leaves it in there, and that's the device to get him in there. And when he does go in there, and 
the bomb drops through and there's nothing Geppetto can do and he loses his boy. And for years, uh, he cannot get over the grief. And so the wood sprite um, ultimately will, will come after Geppetto has created um, this wooden puppet boy, of course, we know will be Pinocchio. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, Max alluded to it. You don't talk to strangers, right, Max? You don't talk to strangers. Bad things can happen when you talk to strangers. And, uh, of course, he'll get ushered into the carnival, but he'll already sign his life away. Um, and, uh, ultimately, though, Geppetto will find him and retrieve him back. And then Pinocchio will leave of his own accord, uh, thinking he can make things right. And, um, and, uh, so he will leave them to go back. And the scene there, I almost lost it. He ultimately, well, he's under, he's under the idea that, uh, that um, Count Volpe is going to adhere to certain things, right? And uh, when he, Spazzatura tells him these things aren't happening, like sending money back to his father and whatnot, he, uh, he will actually confront him. And then, he's re then he realizes that uh, there's not much he can do. He's pretty much stuck in a much worse situation than he was um, before. But that leads to the great funny scene because Mussolini is coming and he wants to see the show. He's heard about the show. Of course, Pinocchio is just the rave across the land because he is a puppet without strings, right? Which is pretty amazing. And uh, people are amazed by it. And Mussolini comes, but uh, Pinocchio and we'll just say Pinocchio and Spez Spezzatura have their own ideas for the show. And let's just say Mussolini is not happy with how it goes. But um, anyhow, real quick, favorite part. What was your favorite part again? You like the part what? When the monkey is in the bubble. In the bubble when they're inside the... Well. They're inside the well, which is an interesting little device of reuniting Geppetto and Pinocchio. Geppetto already having been swallowed by the well, trying to find Pinocchio, and they both will be brought together via that. And what was your favorite? Um, my favorite part was probably um, it was probably the act that Pinocchio and Spesitore put on for Mussolini. That is, that is. I don't know if that's the centerpiece of the film, but that is that is a that is a hilarious uh, moment in the film. Um, okay, final thoughts. Would it? Would are you glad you saw it? Mm -hmm. Are you glad you saw it? Yes. Um, two hours it runs. Netflix uh, has it, and uh, if we know anything of our conversations of late, of course, unfortunately, no idea if this will ever see physical media release. Uh, I really do hope it does, um, because it is definitely one uh, we ought to have in our collection, right? We just got to hope and pray that Netflix does good and puts this thing out there or sells it to somebody that will. Um, again, it, if you haven't seen it yet and you happen to have kids, uh, this is uh, this is just a perfect, perfect family night film, I think. But it does delve into some dark thematic material. It is Guillermo del Toro, but this is a sort of a passion project. In fact, his attachment to Pinocchio goes all the way back to when he was a little child. And uh, I thought he uh, he brought uh, his, his own inner feelings to life uh, in quite a amazing way. Um, so if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely check out Pinocchio presented by Guillermo del Toro, stop motion animation at its best uh, on Netflix presently, hopefully there for quite a while yet. You never know what things that stream though, right? And uh, But it is definitely worth, we're checking out. We're checking out. Mm -hmm. We're checking out. Worth checking out. Good stuff by Guillermo del Toro. As always, we end these things off with Go Bills. This is not a dream. Not a dream.